Hey there, it's Jamie. Welcome back. In our last video, we created some tables and talked about how they were great at conveying a lot of information relatively quickly. But one thing that a table's not, I mean, let's face it, they're not all that interesting to look at. So in this video, I want to show you how to create a map chart, which I think is one of the most interesting types of visualizations to look at. So I'm going to do this by opening a new sheet. And I'm going to start off by asking myself quite a specific question. Namely, how does the percentage of the population that's been fully vaccinated against the coronavirus vary by state? What states have a high percentage of the population that's fully vaccinated and what states have a low portion of the population that's fully vaccinated? This is a good chance to use a chart because the variable that we're interested in is a region that can be placed on a map. So let's start by identifying the variable that we want to use on the map. I've got a few that I could choose from on my tables, but I want to choose the one that is going to show the smallest geographical area. I want to look just at the 50 United States. To do that, I'm going to grab state as opposed to state, territorial, federal area, right? I'm going to grab state, drag it into the field, and it will automatically identify the place in the world that it is, and it will identify the areas that are mapped with blue dots. The next thing I want to do is identify the percentage of people that have received two doses. I had to create a calculated field for that. To do that, you'll click on the down arrow and add a new calculated field. When that opens up, you will see this screen. And I'm going to label or name this variable percentage with two doses to be consistent with the rest of the naming convention in this data set. And I'm going to define it, I'll re-enter that formula for you, as the people who have two doses per 100,000 residents divided by 100,000. That just turns it into a percent. It tells me my calculation is valid, and that's great. Then I'm going to reformat it default properties, number format, and I'm going to express it as a percentage with two decimal places, and then I'll select OK. So now I just simply drag that on top of my map. It didn't do the thing I wanted it to, which was show each state in a variety of different colors. Instead, it gave me dots where States that had a larger portion of the population fully vaccinated got a larger dot. But if we click on Show Me, we'll see that we have another choice. Instead of this, which is called a symbol map, we can choose a regular map. Then we can click Show Me again and it will go away. I can see right away that I've got some issue because the legend doesn't line up in a way that, or doesn't, the legend reflects that I should have dark blue colors, but I don't. And the reason for that is that, again, like we saw in the table, it defaulted to sum, to adding up all of the doses, when instead it needed to be an average. Now that's looking better. This will show us state variation in the percentage of fully vaccinated individuals in percent of full vaccination. How's that? Good enough? So our darker states, such as Alaska, with 4.46% of their population fully vaccinated. West Virginia, with 4.89% of its population fully vaccinated. And the Dakotas, with just over 4% of their population fully vaccinated, seem to be leading the pack at getting their population fully vaccinated. All right. Come back in the next slide and we'll look at how a state's population is related to whether or not it's able to get people fully vaccinated. All right, happy calculating and I'll talk to you soon.